this box here is how I want to continue that process. So let's start with the box. Um, first of all, a uh, small confession. It's not a period toolbox, not even close. This is a Dutch style toolbox, um, which really did not come into existence until about 1800 um, in Holland. And the very famous sloped face on it, uh, on the front, which you'll see in these pictures, is a, uh, that's a nod to the weather. Um, the whole reason from what I have read that it, it came into existence in this shape is that um, the slope surface with a slightly different lid on it, mine is kind of improvised, was meant to keep water from pooling on an otherwise flat surface and that would encourage rust on all the structural members and it would get on the tools and um, this actually helped prolong the life of the tools. Now mine, um, let me be very clear, mine is not a traditional Dutch tool chest. Um, I first saw what a Dutch tool chest was on coincidentally an episode of the Woodwright Shop with Roy Underhill and he one of his guests for that episode was Chris Schultz um, who is a widely known traditional woodworker and he is credited with resurrecting the Dutch tool chest or the Dutch toolbox uh, among hand tool woodworkers and traditional woodworkers in the modern day um, has something that they could build to help polish their skills, display their skills as woodworkers, um, and have something nice in the shop so that you weren't putting all of your traditional woodworking tools into a metal or plastic toolbox. And I'm not passing any judgment. If you have all your traditional tools in a plastic toolbox, more power to you. I, however, wanted the aesthetic and the function of a Dutch toolbox. Um, the toolbox itself, this is, again, not traditional. This is made up of leftover uh, high-grade plywood that was used in the aforementioned shelves. Um, this, the, all these boards, a lot of these dimensions weren't selected because of the tools. They weren't selected because of what they're doing. This is what I had left over after putting together uh, one, two, three, four, eight, nine sets of shelves. Um, so that that a lot of what shaped the dimensions on this and its its overall size but it works it does what I need to do so I'm by no means disappointed um, it fits a full kit and there's actually plenty of room in here to grow so I'm, I'm I feel like the box is going to serve me well um, it is held together with uh, screws uh, traditional Dutch toolbox used uh, joinery uh, which I am not skilled enough to do yet so if there are any traditionalists out there that are scoffing at this, um, yes, go ahead and scoff. I appreciate where you're coming from. I'm not there yet, but I, I wanted I wanted a box that I felt would serve me better than uh, some yellow DeWalt plastic box, and I believe I got it with this. So let's start with uh, let's start with the most obvious item. This is a turning saw. Now, right off the bat, I will tell you that. You're probably never going to see a historical example in the 1800s or in the Middle Ages where a saw would be stored like this on the outside. This is completely my decision because that saw won't fit in the toolbox with everything else I have without disassembling it. And I am not worried about someone stealing something off of this. So I'm very comfortable with these, uh, these hooks here, just sitting it on the lid, letting it collect a little bit of dust and displaying it but as you can see this is it's fairly long this is actually a very large saw this is a 12 inch blade um, and it's called a turning saw for two reasons or there are two possible reasons they call it a turning saw first of all um, the actual knobs themselves this you can look at the detail here this is a handle this is the main gripping handle and it's got a metal pin in it and that pin has a hook which hooks this end of the saw and this one over here does the same thing and they are tensioned by this squeezing together by a twisted rope that's what this member is for and actually this is a little snug when you are storing this you want to keep it 
just slightly unwound. Um, I will, if I were ever to use this, I will pull this out, twist it one more time tighter so it's super tight. Um, this is just a little wobbly, which is fine. I don't want to put too much tension on it. But if you look at these pins very carefully, they turn. And you can actually, you can see here that blade is parallel with the frame of the saw. But, watch this. Now it's perpendicular. I could, I could use this cutting this way into something. Now the other reason why it's called a turning saw, you probably could guess this because of how thin and small this blade is. This saw will cut beautiful curves. And because those hooks are removable, because I can undo it, I can bore a little hole through a piece of wood, feed the blade in, and then hook the saw around it. And I can cut a beautiful circle or a spiral or even a more intricate detail into plank wood. This, uh, uh, just for grins, I put this out in my vise with a piece of one inch thick hardened oak. Now I'm not going to tell you it was easy to cut. I'm not going to brag. Um, but it uh, it did go through it and the edge it left was clean. So I'm very happy. This is going to be great for detail work, great for uh, short work on, uh, on some of my smaller stock. Uh, some of the projects I have planned in the future, I think this is going to be a really, really good tool. And um, Again, I want you all to take a look at this. I made this. The only thing about this that is not handmade, I bought the rope and I bought the blade. But these pins were cut from metal stock. I, I cut them down and I filed them. This handle, which is uh, roughly round, it's not perfectly round, was square stock. Um, and these arms were from a giant uh, I think I still have most of it out there, a giant eight foot board of, of uh, hardened dried oak. And I chopped these off and uh, planed them down and shaped them. And it's not, it's not perfect. It's not a beautiful piece. There's a lot I could do differently and there's a lot that I would do differently if I had to do it again. But it works and it's beautiful. So this is, by the way, oak. Um, the center spar is poplar, as are the handles. The pins are steel, and the blade, I believe, is steel. Like I said, I ordered that from a, uh, uh, a vendor. Now, it is held in place by a toggle pin. Um, there is a hole drilled into the, the lid, and that pin just sits in there, and that holds it against these hooks. And that's what lets me do this without dropping it. 